Well, I think for most of us, you know, that grew up in the era of space travel, we all dreamed about being a fighter pilot, dreamed about being Chuck Yeager, dreamed about being Neil Armstrong. And so for me, it was a way to realize that dream even though I didn't go through the military. Um, I wanted to. My eyesight wasn't good enough to make it as a fighter jock and I was too tall at the time. Uh, so this is a lifelong dream to be able to fly fighters and it's something that I've always wanted to do and it's a kind of flying that you just can't get anywhere else. This is a L39C. It's made by Aero Vachoti in uh, Czechoslovakia. It was the, contracted as the primary Russian jet trainer. So it was the airplane that people flew to learn how to fly MiGs. And it's very comparable to the American A4 Skyhawk in speed and handling. In fact, if you look at it, it's kind of a knockoff of a Skyhawk. Um, it's still used as a frontline ground attack, light attack fighter. When it's uh, deployed in military service, it's got two rocket pods two 500-pound bombs and uh, two Sidewinder-style missiles and a 50-millimeter cannon in the belly. Of course, when we bring it over here, they uh, demilitarize it and take all that fun stuff off. Well, I, my, my father was in the Air Force, so I grew up around airplanes. Uh, I think that, that, you know, there was an airport very nearby my house. We used to go watch the planes take off and land and the very first opportunity I got, I was in a plane and just been an obsession ever since. Uh, I used to drag my parents to air shows and, and always wanted to be a fighter pilot. Um, actually, I wanted to be an astronaut and found out the only way to be an astronaut was to be a fighter pilot, so I figured, okay, that's the way to go. And then uh, when I realized that I couldn't be a fighter pilot, I still was stuck with the aviation bug and it's lasted for you know, 28 years. The primary difference between uh, flying a fighter jet and flying a general aviation airplane is that a, a GA airplane is easier to slow down, the speeds are not as critical, whereas in a fighter jet, slowing the airplane down in the first place is difficult to induce enough drag to get it slow, and then keeping the speeds correct throughout all phases of flight are highly important. What's involved in setting a speed record? Uh, it's kind of complicated. You have to go through the NAA, which is the National Aeronautics Association, and they set up a, a sanction. They set up a course for you. Right. And then you have to liaise with the FAA, and they uh, monitor you on radar and time you from point to point. So there's quite a bit of paperwork to fill out, and there's some fees involved. And it's very, very complicated. Uh, but in the end of the day, you've, you've established your mark in history, and there's nothing to be said for that. Some nice bragging rights. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you got something to talk about in the bar. That's right. <laughs> okay. Once I got my type rating, uh, I was, I'd hired some military people to, uh, to teach me how to do air combat maneuvers and aerobatics, thinking that, you know, to really get the most out of this airplane, I should probably hire the people to do it for a living to teach me. And uh, I showed up the first day in a Hawaiian shirt and a pair of shorts and was on my cell phone for, for 20 minutes before we started the briefing, and so I, I acquired the call sign Hollywood. When you're getting ready to take off, you line up on the runway, you run the engine up to um, 103%, check your temperatures, looking for something not to exceed 650 degrees centigrade. Uh, then you apply full mill thrust, which in this case 106%. Release the brakes, you feel an instantaneous kick in your back as, the, as you start rolling forward. Uh, at about 1,800 feet down the runway, you're at 100 knots, and you V1 at 100 knots, rotate. Once you have a positive rate of climb, gear up. Flaps come up at 140, which is, is seconds later, and you're accelerating through 160 towards your target to climb speed of 196 indicated. At 196 indicated, depending upon the outside temperature, you're doing uh, 3,500 to 4,000 feet a minute vertically, and you can hold that speed and that climb rate all the way up to 35,000 feet. When you come back into land, uh, if you fly a normal pattern, and there's two kinds of pattern, the military overhead, which you come straight down the runway at 1,500 feet off the ground, break hard to the left or right depending upon the airport and uh, idle thrust, speed brakes out, gear flaps, etc. But in a normal pattern entry, you, uh, you would fly the downwind leg at uh, 180 knots, gear down at midfield on the downwind, uh, one notch of flaps just before the base, turn base, hopefully you're down to 160, 150, and uh, turn final, bringing the final notch of flaps down to 40 degrees at 130 knots, 120 on short final, and try to touch down at 115 knots. Okay, got it. Now, all that remains is to get in and go flying. I've often wondered what comes first with a dream machine, the dream or the machine. Either way, in this case, it's a Hollywood ending. <laughs>